Good morning. Welcome to another video by Antique Serena. I'm coming to you from the back of another bank holiday weekend and I've had a lot of car boot sale success. As you know, I buy and sell things from car boot sales for my living and today I'm going to share with you what I managed to buy yesterday in Besma Road in Cardiff. Now Besma is a very long established car boot sale, wonderful boot sale. I've bought some amazing things there over the years and they've always done me proud selling. Not so much this week. Um, selling was very very poor yesterday um, and I mean poor it was as bad as a day selling as I've ever had um, but then you had Sully and all the others were on and hardly any buyers turned up in Besma. but on the plus side of that all of the dealers that were there buying we really had a few nice pieces I'll start off the day give you an example I bought this crystal decanter now it was by a company called Atlantis and okay a crystal decanter on his own is neither you know they nothing exciting this one all this is solid silver it's fully hallmarked around here i don't know if you can see it or not you've got the um, import marks and the lion marks and yeah i think it's a london hallmark with the lion patent and everything else so we got a beautiful crystal decanter produced by atlantis Obviously, it's a Portugal crystal, as it says on the label, but a sterling silver um, collar. Now, I paid a fiver for that. That's an easy £45. Easy. So, I'm really pleased with that. That was a good little buy. And to be honest with you, that's probably going to end up on eBay. It may go in the shop for a little bit, but it's an eBay item. And I'll probably put 65 on it on eBay in the hope to achieve about £40, £45. But that's where we'll be with that. I bought off a dealer, a young lady that come down there, um, I'm sure I've seen her there before, to be honest with you, bought three heads, mannequin heads, one female, and then we have two that are male, so, okay, why have I bought them, I bought them to use in my shop as display purposes, now I have hats regularly, and a hat like that just sat on a shelf looks nothing at all. So you put that hat on this mean looking mannequin and all of a sudden it's starting to look something. Makes a difference to the hat, to everything. Now I paid a tenner for the three polystyrene mannequin heads. Oh. Display heads, whatever you want to call them. They're nice and I love the facial expressions. And it's nice to have males. They're always female that I see. So to have two male, which will display all my military hats really well. And to be honest, I'll buy more if I see them. Pretty much £3 each. Or £3.33 each, if you like. Um, that's not bad at all. I was over the moon. I didn't knock it down. I gave her the £10 she asked for. I thought they were worth every penny. Next piece I got, guys, is a bit of a mystery piece. Now this was on the stall and a couple of people stopped and looked at it and they were thinking well what is it now personally i think it's a money box for like a bus conductor or something to put the money in because it's scooped you know like the old um where you used to get your change out of the bus and then it'd be scooped up for you to just scoop your change up type thing that's what i'm thinking a couple of people have said mining um but i'm thinking it's more like a bus conductor's carry money box type of thing Put your, your money in and scoop your change out. Uh, research is going to be needed. I could be wrong with our one, but it is an unusual piece. It cost me £3. It's in this sort of brushed aluminium with this plastic front and a brass piano hinge. So, yeah, it's not expensively made. So, it certainly could be for buses or even mining, but uh, I'm thinking more along the bus line. But feel free to leave a comment guys if you uh, if you've seen one before you can see what i mean about that shape it's perfect for scooping stuff out but for three pound i thought what a curio it go even if i didn't find out what it was it'd go in the cabinet for 12 15 pound and somebody's going to know and they're going to buy it so it was a good bargain there to be had now halfway through the day a gentleman comes up to me with some jewelry and a lighter I know it doesn't look much like a lighter, but it is. It's um, 
Now it's missing its top plate. It would have had a finishing plate here. Um, however, it is a proper Dunhill lighter. I don't know if you're getting enough light here to see it, but it's a Dunhill uh, patent number 861972, and it's, it is actually working. It's not lighted in because I haven't put no petrol in it. I'm going to get myself a replacement top to go on there. Just a replacement top here. It's only just a flat bit of brushed steel. I'll, what I'll probably do, I'll buy a broken one of these lighters or a naft one and take the plate off and put it onto this. It's in lovely condition as you can see. Now this combined with the jewellery I bought, I paid £40 for the tool. So I'm going to say £25 for this and then I'll put £15 to the jewellery later on. But I paid £40 for the tool, but it is a beautiful lighter. Dunhill, real good name. Now I've seen these and sold them in the past. I've sold them for as much as 95 and as low as sort of 45. Um, but the condition this one is in, once I replace that top, I'd see it a good 75, 80 pound lighter. So I'm really pleased with that one. Um, I've had a bit of art. I've done no research on any of them yet. They're just like local artists. This one's wrote on the back. Maurice Woodhead of number 18 Long Meadow Skipton. A side lane in star bottom watercolour. So it's a, quite a pleasant uh, watercolour. Obviously um, it's going to need to go to somebody who lives in the area or who's holidayed in the area. But that's an eBay item. It is a genuine watercolour, you know, work of art if you like. And it cost me two pounds. It's got to be 20, 30 pounds of anybody's money. It may take a little while to find the right buyer, but it's got to be 20, 30 pounds for a, an original watercolour. My next piece, I quite like this one. That will appeal to anybody. It's sort of a um, coastal scene, if you like. You've got the seagulls there and the little boat oared or moored up. On this one, uh, the title is The Mooring. And the medium is the pastel, so it's done in pastels, and the artist is George Ford. And it was framed in Bridgend. So again, not too bad. Quite a local artist, probably, to me. But it's a really nice painting. I like that. Again, £2. Nice little pastel. That one, I'll probably try in the shop for a little bit, but then I'll end up on eBay. And what we got here? It's the first real proper look I've added them because I just buy them, chuck them in a the car, drive home and order into the shop ready for today. Now this one's a nice big splash of colour. It's not the best painting in the world but it is a real nice, almost abstract bowl of flowers. I love the colours. Signed painting again. Uh, nothing on the back of this one. I can't make out the signature in a minute. But it's an oil on board. Yeah, oil on board, and uh, there's the signature. I'll have to do some research into that. But again, it was two quid, guys. I weren't going to leave a painting like that for two quid. There's quite a bit of skill involved in painting to that level. It looks a bit chucked together, but it's not. It's actually quite nice. And if you just want to splash a colour on your wall, you know, for two quid, that was a steal. So again, that'll go out probably 20, 30 pounds. Unless they find out the artist is somebody good. Um, I got jewellery and coins to show you. One of my star buys for the day was this. Take a look at this. There we go, guys. We have, I know I don't do much by way of furniture, but I couldn't leave it there. It's a really nice Urkel mid century rocking chair. And the best part about it is, as with anything, if you have the original label, it improves the value, and there we have the original label. It's stamped underneath 56, so I presume that's the year 1956. Once I stain up the handles, or the armrests rather, handles, don't know where that come from, um, and give it a nice wax, that's going to be a beautiful little piece. And it cost me £20 yesterday off a dealer I know, he's a regular, he bought it for someone else and it didn't turn up for it. So I got to have it, and it is a really nice rocking chair. 
but I see that going in the shop here you know, anywhere between 75 and 100 pounds once it's all waxed up and finished nice. So I'm really pleased with that. Okay guys, as you know, I don't get a lot of jewellery as a rule from um, Bessemer because there's just so many people after it. But I did manage to get these pieces yesterday. And I got these pair of earrings and they are absolutely gorgeous. I'm not 100% what the redstone is yet. Might be a bit of coral or something, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research. Um, fortunately, I'll just search online for the company. Now, she had the receipts there, but she wouldn't give them to me because the name and address was on them. She paid £65 for that pair of earrings. I know. Shocking or what, but they are beautiful. Really nice. They're in sterling silver, but I don't know what this is yet, but we're going to find out. And off the same lady, I bought this beautiful ring. Look at the colours in that ring. And we have a sterling silver ring there. Now I paid her for the ring and the earrings, I paid her £12. As you can see, that's probably a £25 ring and they are probably going to be £25, £30 for the earrings. And she's never put them on. Um, moving on then, we, this is the piece that came in with the uh, Dunhill light and it's a beautiful brooch, sterling silver. And um, we've got a nice slice of Argate down here. I'm assuming it's Argate, I'm not 100% with my stones. Fully stamped up on the back, and it's just a nice brooch. Really nice bit of work gone into that. And that's got to be a 35, 40 pound piece, no problem at all. Um, so for 15, I've allocated to that. That's a really good buy. I do like that quite a lot, actually. Um, this was on a silver plated tea set and tray I bought. You didn't get to see it. I've put the tea set into my scrap box and the trays come in the shop here. But I bought it purely for this solid silver pendant and chain. Um, this was wrapped around the handle of the tea set. So I didn't say anything. I just said, how much is your tea service, please? And they told me a fiver. There's more than the fiver in scrap value in the tea set. So this really comes in for free. Um, and then I got the tray, which will sell for 10 or 15 pounds. And this, you have loop or hoop earrings and two set of studs, and that is all in white gold. That's not silver, that's white gold. And I paid £12 for the set. Well, there's more than a gram per year, uh, so already I'm in front at £13.50 a gram for scrap. I'm already in front. Then I've got them two pairs, but I'm not melting it. That's a really nice set, good make, and that'll probably go out for about £35-£40 for the set. So that's my jewellery haul, guys, from Best Man. I'm going to show you the coin haul next. Okay, that was um, how it came to me. It was a box full of coins, just mixed coins, and I paid £10. Um, it came from the same lady as I had the white gold. Now, while I was at the car boot sale selling, I went through it quickly, and these are the ones I filtered out. i got to go through it again to make sure there's no others um, actually still in there of any worth or value. So you got a little late 18th century cartwheel penny. Well, this one broke my heart. You got a George III half crown. And it's in lovely condition, 1811. And look at that. They put a bloody bend in it, buckled it. And it's not an accident, if you ask me, because every single silver coin they've buckled. All of them. Somebody has done it on purpose to destroy the coins. Um, there's other coins in here as well. It's not all just about the silver. Um, I did pick up a few nice ones already. That one's 1835. And you've got an Anna, or a quarter Anna. Is that one I picked out for research? 1935. Which one I'm going to have to look into to see if it's silver or not. There's one or two in there that I'm not 100% on. Um, these 20 pences were really unusual. Have a look at these. If you like your modern coinage. 2004 20 pence piece. That is the um, Darwin Monkey, I think. I'll look at that one again. And you've got a set of keys. I haven't had these 20 pences before. 
One's 2006, one's 2004, Gibraltar and Gibraltar. So I know I've got a buyer for those straight away. So all in all, that's the um, group of coins. There's a good little mix in there. There was quite a bit of silver there too. And these are the coins I feel that I can sell. I'm going to try and straighten these out rather than hammering them. I'm going to put them in a vise and press them very gently and try and flatten them. Still going to be marked, but for an 1811 or 1817 rather, half crown, the condition of it is really nice. So I'm going to try and save it. And same with all these others, they should be easier because they're thinner. So, but yeah, they're all early, early dates and they've, they've destroyed them all. And that is just senseless act of violence. No need of that, vandalism. And then obviously we got all these coins in here. I'm going to go through them all tidy there, make sure there's nothing decent in there. And then whatever's left will get tipped in the tub I've got up for sale in the shop already. And they'll get added in. So there's, um, there's quite a bit in here still, so for a tenner I was over the moon. There's got to be 20 quid's worth of scrap value in silver in there. Right, I've got a few more pieces to show you before we call it. Now, here's another tea set I bought. This isn't the one I paid and put in my scrap box for a fiver. Uh, this tea set come, it's in lovely condition. It's Art Deco 1930s, love the shape of the handle. Ebony handle. And it's a really nice tea set. And it's in good condition. I had to check then, out of curiosity, it wasn't silver, but no, it's EPNS. Um, so yeah, I paid £2 for that, guys. A tea service like that. I know it's not the most fashionable in the world anymore, but a three-piece set like that still could be 20 25 quid in the shop. Put it cleaned up on the shelf, it's going to look amazing. People are still going to buy it. So for two quid into 20 25 quid, that's over 10 to 1 for your money. It's just a no-brainer. Again, another two pound buy was this um, Chinese pattern. I'm not sure of the exact pattern. It's ch certainly Chinese influence. Um, you've got a meat plate, ivory. Oh, hold on, what have we got here? So I think it's Canton pattern. That's what's wrote on it. I'll show you in a minute. And it's not in the normal blue and white. This is um, black and white, or I think it's sepia, it's called, I think. Um, but a nice, large Victorian meat plate. Here you got an impressed mark of ivory year. Date letter, no, or mold number, 91. I think that's the date, 1891 maybe. And then down by here, we have the maker's mark. Let's have a look here. Hate these springs because they break the bloody plates. I'm gonna have to take it off. Nice right then. H and A. The pattern is can't then make his mark is H and A. So easy, easy find that'll be. Um, so it's going to be before 1891 because there's no England or nothing else on there and it became law to stamp the country of origin I think it was 1891 so it's going to be earlier than that even though it's got a 91 stamped on it don't want to leave that off let's spin it there you go Plate the wag on just a nice large Canton pattern meat plate, 19th century, for two pounds, it's a steal. It's got to be 25 or 30 pound again. That's a really decorative piece of pottery. And let me see, while I'm here, I just want to show you the silver plate tray I've saved. The tea service has been scrapped, uh, but it's a good, heavy, really heavy one, but it was all broken up. But this is the tray I've saved. Really nice, um, I feel like arts and crafts design. It's got this sort of oak leaf all the way around it. Any marks? 
Yeah. We have, I can't read the mark without an eyeglass, but we have a shield over here, which will be the maker's mark. I don't know if you can see it. So I'll do some research on that later on when I get time before I sell it. And I'll find out who that is. Right. I'll just give it a little wipe by there. So a bit of research needed. I'm assuming it's silver plate. Doubt very much at this weight, because you're talking about four kilos by there. There's no way that's going to be silver. But uh, we will. Hold on, we got something else stamped on the on the handle. France. So it's it's got France stamped by there, along with some other impressed marks. Definitely need an eyeglass. I can't see tidy. So I'm going to look up the French hallmarking system just to make sure and the French plate and date it. But we have a really nice French silver plate tray. And again, it owes me nothing because I've already weighed in the tea service. Um, and it was brass tea, ser tea set. It didn't belong to this anyway, but it was heavy. It was a good two or three kilos. Uh, so this is free. And I see this cleaned up or be as plate 25 30 pound again no problem at all nice little serving tray and um, the fact is French might even end up on eBay for a bit more so guys that's my um, days buying at uh, best my I've had a few other odds and ends that are not worth uh, putting into the video uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed having a little look as you can see I always buy a really good mix of items um, to be honest with you, you never know what's going on in the video from one day to the next. There are some constants as in I always buy glass, I always buy coins, I always buy jewellery and gold and silver things. But other than that, anybody's guess is what I turn up with. So I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, subscribe guys for future videos. Thanks for watching and bye for now.